Palia has a ton of awesome ways to interact with the world around you, but farming is arguably the most important, and certainly the most iconic. Done properly, it not only makes you a tremendous amount of passive income while you're not logged into the game, but it also supplies your cooking skill. And let's be honest, if you're not running around rage picking vegetables at 2am, then you're not playing the game right. RAGE FARMING! I'm Smoothest Mango, and we're gonna talk about farming and Palia. So let's talk about it in detail, and get you set up for long-term success. A quick disclaimer, this guide will exclude blueberries and apples, which require level 10 farming to access, which is very few people at this time. I'm gonna post a follow-up video to discuss optimal farming post-level 10 at a later date. First things first, you unlock gardening in Palia after you complete the Welcome to Palia quest and speak to Badru, who will come to your plot and teach you how to garden, and give you your first two soil plots. Eh, this is about an hour into the game, so I wouldn't sweat it if you haven't seen it come up yet and you're new to the game. Badru will also be your go-to contact for purchasing soil and gardening upgrades such as improved watering can and even how to craft fertilizer. The game currently maxes out at 9 soil plots for a total of 81 slots to grow crops. When you begin the game, you will have lots of options to spend your money on. I recommend prioritizing the 9 soil plots so you can maximize your passive income as quickly as possible. A properly set up farm is growing even when you're not around, and that's really important to letting you progress in the game without constantly feeling like you're grinding. I told you to prioritize 9 soil plots, but what should you be planting? Well, here are the options available to you at Zeki's. But the kicker in Palia is that crops have unique bonuses they provide to adjacent plants. These bonuses only apply to the 4 squares adjacent in cardinal directions. No diagonals. There are 5 total bonuses, and let's go through all of them. Water retention means adjacent plants will never need to be rewatered after the first time. Tomatoes and potatoes provide this. Weed prevention. Adjacent plants will never need to be weeded. This is onions and carrots. Quality upgrade? Adjacent plants will be upgraded to star quality when harvested. Star quality increases the selling value by 50%, and this can be provided by cotton seeds. Harvest boost. You will harvest more crops when gathered. This is wheat and rice. And then there's growth upgrade. This is a speed boost that decreases the time it takes for crops to become harvestable, and this is apples and blueberries, which like I said before, we'll talk about in another video. Very important note. Same type plants cannot provide adjacency bonuses to each other, so two tomatoes side by side do not keep each other watered. Instead, we must put tomatoes adjacent to potatoes so they will each care for the other. I actually really like this entire crop bonus methodology the developers came up with because it ensures a very healthy variety of crops grown. I'm a huge fan of diversity when it comes to game like this instead of a meta of just planting corn. Of these adjacency bonuses, two are the most important for passive income, and that's the water retention and the weed prevention to ensure your crops are always growing hands off. After that, harvest boost from wheat and rice is the most important. We ignore cotton because we can replace it entirely with quality upgrade fertilizer, which can be unlocked and bought from Badru. The recipe for it is quite simple, any one bug, any one meat, and one sundrop lily. All very easily gathered. Now that we've covered all the different crop types, let's talk layout. The ideal layout is based on having all 9 slots. So a note here, I worked out the ideal strategy, I was doing the math in my head, I was charting on a, you know, on a whiteboard, and then I went to the internet and discovered that not only had someone done the exact same thing I had done, but they laid it out in a much more beautiful and easy to read manner than my deranged scribbles. So a huge shout out to the two min-maxing dudes posting on Reddit as Wernick. I've linked to their post in the description if you want to check it out in more detail. But for now, let me review their snapshot because it covers everything that I was already going to discuss and they just did a much better job of it. The visual seems a little daunting at first, but trust me, it gives you full coverage except for the four rice in the corner, but those are only missing the harvest boost. They're still protected from water retention and they have weed prevention as well, so your entire plot is autonomous. These gentlemen even went a step further than I did and gridded out a cheat sheet for not only the layout, but also the number of seeds required and revenue streams. I'm going to shamelessly share their work here because I think they did an incredible job and deserve some attention for it. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Now, we've covered all the big stuff, but let's cover some random tips that I found along the process that I think will help you out. Number one, tilling. Tilling the soil feels like a slow process, but if you use a sweeping motion with your mouse, it will go much more quickly, as you can see here. Number two, as you level up your gardening skill, Badger will offer you recipes for an upgraded watering can. Make sure to grab this, because your watering will become an AoE splash effect, which makes watering a much quicker process, especially as you continue to upgrade. Number three, worm farm. You unlock the worm farm at level 4 fishing, and it's great for producing fertilizer and worms that are necessary for high level fishing. I highly recommend using it frequently, and saving a couple of your vegetables for it. And number 4, you harvested your first set of crops. Should you sell it, or should you save it? I recommend selling all gold stars. Unless specifically needed for a quest, they're best utilized for their profit increase. 
I recommend saving a lot of your wheat and carrots for cooking. Wheat is used a lot in high level recipes and carrots are the cheapest of your vegetables that can be used for any vegetable cooking recipe. If you've enjoyed this guide, or if you just want to know more about my wall of bugs, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit me in the comments with your questions. I love collaborating on games like this and finding new and exciting ways to play the game. Until next time, stay cozy.